All right, hello everybody. Again, this is the Fantasy Sports Boss. Welcome to the Fantasy Sports Boss Fantasy Football Podcast. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. The regular season uh, is quickly approaching, and of course, what made this channel stand out when I debuted it last year is the instant injury update videos that go up throughout the day uh, on Sunday through all the games. As soon as a big injury happens to a key player, uh, I post a, a reaction video probably about 30 seconds after it happens. So uh, make sure that you are subscribed and the notification bell is hit as well. Uh, Preseason week two, uh, fully underway. We had two more games last night. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, also wanted to talk about uh, diversifying your fantasy football teams and why this is really important uh, as uh, drafts are really going hot and heavy right now. Um, so we're going to get to all of that. Now, last night, Giants and Carolina Panthers. So anybody who watched this game, and I watched it as a Giants fan, uh, despite my aversion for preseason games, uh, the Giants won the game 21-19. to Daniel Jones played for what's going to be the only time this season. All right, so Brian Dable put him out there. He's not going to play him next week. Saquon Barkley did not play. He will not play the entire preseason. So once again, I believe this is the third preseason in a row. Barkley's not playing. So uh, anybody who's drafting Barkley, know, you should know, especially if you're drafting this weekend, uh, he's not going to play next weekend either. So the risk of injury for him is uh, much lower than anybody you know who's, who's going to be playing in the game. But I have to tell you, as somebody who regardless of my Giants fandom, as somebody who's a big fan of Darren Waller, going back years, you know I've had Darren Waller on my fantasy football team like every year since he he uh, broke out with the Raiders. What he what he's done with the Giants, going back to, to minicamp, and I've seen it personally, um, and now, you know, in, in, in last night's preseason game, is unbelievable. And it's just a reminder of how Besides Travis Kelsey, he is the most talented, athletically gifted tight end in football. All right. So um, in the one drive that they were on the field together, uh, the the Panthers had no answer for Darren Waller. All right. So the official uh, the official total for Waller uh, was three receptions uh, for 30 yards. He should have had a fourth. He had one knocked out. And basically, he did whatever he wanted to do on the field, uh, you know, and, and, and the old cliche, he's 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 too big for defensive backs too fast for linebackers totally applies here. And remember, you know, it, it seems like such, you know, such a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago when uh when Waller was catching 90 plus passes back-to-back -back seasons for the Raiders. Um now he hasn't been as prolific a touchdown guy as as Travis Kelsey um and clearly takes a back seat to him in that next tier of tight ends, but you know, I I I would not object to anybody as a matter of fact, I would do this myself. Who drafts Darren Waller ahead of George Kittle, ahead of Dallas Goddard, ahead of Kyle Pitts? I think he's worth drafting over all three of those guys. You know, I have it Kelsey, Andrews, Hawkinson, Waller. That's how I have it right now. And I own Waller in the one league that I just finished drafting. Um, and it is a little bit of that Giants homerism, of course. You know, it's going to be doubly exciting to see uh, a, a prime fantasy piece that I have on my team on the team that I root for. But this is going to be a big thing. As long as Waller could stay healthy, the numbers are going to be unbelievable. And, and I truly believe if he can play the majority of games this season, 80 catches is almost guaranteed. And Dayball wants to emphasize tight ends around the goal line. Now, Daniel Bellinger, the other tight end, caught the touchdown on that opening drive from Daniel, uh, Daniel Jones. They did a crossing route. Waller went one way. Defense back linebacker went with Waller. Bellinger went the other way. He was wide open. And he caught a touchdown from Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones, by the way, uh, 8 of 9, 69 yards and a touchdown pass. He also ran for 6 yards. Going back to May, I said he's a top 12 fantasy football quarterback. I had him number 12. And I stand by that. Because here's the thing. For the first time in his career, Daniel Jones is in the, in the same offensive system for the second year in a row. And you can just see it. The ball's coming out quick. He's, he's diagnosing the defense quickly. Uh, he's not thinking as much. It's coming natural to him. And that is the beauty of a quarterback, a young quarterback who's starting to get it. You know, he's 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 very athletic. And, that, you know, that was really underreported when he came out of college, when he came out of Duke, where he was a walk-on. Um, but he was schooled by David Cutcliffe, who, of course, uh, taught Peyton Manning. And you could just see it. Uh, and like I said, the athleticism was not as discussed as much with Daniel Jones. It was kind of like almost like a secret. And he ran for over 700 yards last season. 
and he's probably going to do it again this year if he stays on the field. He cut down his turnovers drastically. So if you're in a super flex league, Daniel Jones absolutely is a top QB2 in a super flex league. He's a top 12 guy overall. And even in, even in standard leagues, you know, I just got done telling you guys, Geno Smith was drafted in the last round of a 16-round draft that I was just in. Daniel Jones, I think, went in round 13 or 14. So you could just get those two guys, you know, stack up on your running backs, your, your receivers, and Darren Waller, and then come back at the, at the very end of your draft and take Daniel Jones and Geno Smith and just rotate them. So, I mean, listen, they look good. I mean, it was one drive. It's preseason. I get it. But Jones looked good. All right, Bryce Young was 3 for 6, 35 yards. Um, you know, he ran for only one yard. N nothing really happening there with him yet. Um, I don't have an issue with him. And he's going to be just fine. Um, he's going to go through growing pains. He's a small quarterback. We all know that. But very, very smart, very intelligent, very accurate, extremely accurate. One of the most accurate quarterbacks I've seen coming out of college in years. Uh, he's going to be just fine. I'm not worried about him. Chuba Hubbard, 30 yards rushing. Did get injured, or injured a knee. Miles Sanders coming back from a groin injury. So the Panthers have some running back injuries um, that they have to concern themselves with. Uh, nothing else really happening. Jonathan Mingo caught a pass for 15 yards. You know, Jonathan Mingo never even led his college team in receiving. So I'm not really, you know, I've seen some, some sleeper posts about Jonathan Mingo. I don't buy it. You know, I, I think he's an okay young player, but he never even led his college team in receiving. So that's that's like a red flag right there for me. Um, DJ Chalk one catch for 13 yards. Adam Thielen one for seven. You know, it, it's I'm not I'm not actively going after any of these guys now. The Giants, so the the they have a bunch of wide receiver two three kind of players, and so it's kind of difficult has been difficult to try to figure out who's going to be the starter. Well, uh, Isaiah Hodgins continues his big play since he came over from the Buffalo Bills last season. In uh, this one, he caught two passes for 45 yards. Look good. How about Jalen Hyatt, the rookie? Had a drop, but came right back and caught a touchdown pass, 30-plus yard touchdown pass from Terod Taylor, four catches for 35 yards in the score. Very, very fast. Um, you know, there's there's that, that story that's out there that he ran 24 miles per hour. Um, I don't know if it was a preseason game or whatever it was, but that was faster than any uh, receiver ran in all of football last year. Tyreek, Tyreek Hill had the highest miles per hour number of any receiver in football last year. And, uh, you know, Hyatt was better than that, better than that. So there's a lot of athleticism there. Jalen Hyatt is somebody to keep an eye on. Because again, Brian Dable is an offensive genius. He's going to get the best out of these guys. Paris Campbell, three catches for 23 yards. Paris Campbell looks good. He's going to operate out of the slot. Um, I think those three, I think Hodgins, Campbell, and Sterling Shepard, those are your starters. Campbell will be in the slot. Shepard will be out wide. If you can stay healthy, Isaiah Hodgins out wide. Hodgins done way too much last season. He was a touchdown guy the second half of the year. Uh, I think he caught touchdowns in four out of five games. He's going to be the guy there. So if you're, you know, if you're in a five wide receiver league, Isaiah Hodgins is a really good pickup uh, that nobody's really going to be looking at uh, late in the draft. Um, Eric Ray, the rookie, five carries, 16 yards, and a touchdown. Had a, you know, James Robinson, four carries for 10 yards. Nothing really. Um, Nothing really too spectacular there, but that you know they have Saquon Barkley and bubble wrap, which is fine by me. Um, you know, don't risk the guy. There's no reason to do that, so um, that's good to see. All right, um, man, another tie. The Bengals and the Falcons tied at 13 after the Browns and Eagles tied at 18 the day before. That's kind of strange, um, but a couple of things here on this game. So Desmond Ritter looked pretty good. Seven of nine, 80 yards. He did have an interception, but um, you know he ran for seven yards. I've been hard on Desmond Ritter. I saw him a lot in college at Cincinnati. I wasn't impressed. You know, that's why he was a mid-round pick. Uh, there are accuracy issues last night, notwithstanding, of course. Um, he didn't play that badly when he when he took over for Marcus Mariota um, late in the 2022 season. You know, you, you you keep hearing that the Falcons want to throw it more. There there are a lot. This offense. If you look at this offense overall, this is a really, really potent offense. This might be the best collection of young talent in all of football. You have a generational tight end in Kyle Pitts. You have Drake London, a wide receiver, who's on the cusp of a huge breakout. And you have a generational running back, the best running back prospect since Saquon Barkley. Maybe the most high prospect uh, running back prospect ever in Bajan Robinson. And Bajan Robinson, man, you just saw it. It's, it just comes so easy to him, so natural. Four carries, 20 yards. Um, 
Uh, I think he caught a pass as well. Let me just see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, one catch for six yards. You know, he looked good. He runs so smooth, so easy, very little effort. Um, it, it was. It, he's going to be a sight to see. And I and I told you, and this is the anti running back first round guy. That is the only guy I would I would even remotely consider taking in round one at running back. If I was in that like late, you know, in a 12 team league, if I'm in that seven, eight, nine spot, which is like sort of like a dead spot for me, because, you know, the first four picks are Jefferson, Chase, McCaffrey, and Eckler generally, right? And then after that, you know, you have your Cooper Cops, your Tyree Kill. I don't love either one of those guys. Um, you know, Saquon Barkley. Um, you know, is he going to shut it down early if the Giants aren't competitive to save himself for, for possible free agency? Again, that whole fiasco with the contract. Uh, you know, I'm not liking that middle portion of the round. Now, at the end of round one, I'm loving that A.J. Brown, the Amon Ross St. Brown, um, you know, uh, th those guys there. Um, but Bajon Robinson, he's, he's tempting. Now, you keep hearing that Tyler Algier... And Robinson hasn't been listed as number one on a depth chart this whole this whole summer, which you know I don't I don't read in, anything into that. I think it's just the coaching staff trying to take pressure off of him. Uh, but you keep hearing that Tyler Algier is going to get a decent amount of work. Um, concerns me a little bit, not too much. I still think Robinson is a late you know should be a late first round pick. He should be in that you know eight to, to ten range in that first round, so like the late middle, if you will. Um, but Algier was good last year as a rookie. He was a fine for the team. He really was. And this team has drafted really well, the Falcons. They they really hit it out of the park drafting, for sure. Um, you'd like to see a better quarterback situation, but maybe Ritter will surprise me and, and turn out to be better than I think he's going to be. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see about that. But, you know, if you put – if Aaron Rodgers didn't go to the Jets and he ended up on the Falcons, holy shit. Like, we'd all be running to draft Kyle Pitts and, and Drake London and whatnot. So, Drake London, two catches for 33 yards. Um, he's not a speedster, but this guy knows what he's doing. He knows how to get open. Um, you know, Drake London Drake London could be a guy on the cusp. And this is a, a very tight target tree. You have Drake London. You have um, Kyle Pitts. And who else? Can you name me the third receiver on this team? So... You know, even if they run it as as often as they ran it last year, which was a ton, there's the the, the targets are going to go to London and go to Pitts. You would think, right? I, I'm more I'm more confident in London than I am on Pitts. All right, I I'm not chasing Kyle Pitts anywhere. But Drake London, if he falls, you know, as my wide receiver three, I'm good with that. You know, I faded him last year because of the quarterback situation, um, but. Drake London, you know, he's, he's intriguing. He's intriguing because of the, the tight target tree. And I'd much rather, even though I've been a little hard on him, more than hard on him, Desmond Ritter, I'd rather have him than Marcus Mariota, who's just got awful and quit on this team last year. Um, you know, Marcus Mariota shouldn't even be in the NFL after the shit that he pulled last year. But that's 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 beside the point. Um, all right, as far as the Browns, so Deshaun Matza didn't play. I, excuse me, the Bengals. Um... Uh, I saw the orange colors. I just reflexively thought of the Browns. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Bear with me, guys. Um, as far as the Bengals, uh, Joe Burrow didn't play. Burrow's going to be fine week one. You know, it was scary what happened to him with that calf. Um, you know, initially when he went down, it was fear, you know, God, is an ACL or whatnot. But he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine for week one. So if you're drafting again this weekend, draft Jamar Chase with confidence. Um, I don't I don't see any issue there. Chase Brown was 9 for 18 running the ball and a touchdown. He hasn't really been that good. Uh, Chris Evans wasn't much better. Those two were battling it out to be the backup um, to Joe Mixon. And Mixon is an aging back, so this is a storyline that you want to, you know, at least keep tabs on. Um, none of the none of the top three guys uh, suited up in terms of the receivers, so um, nothing really happening there. Now, uh, today's schedule, uh, a ton of games today. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we have eight games today. Nine, excuse me, 10, 11. Wow. All right, we have 11 games today. So, wow, today is going to be overdrive. All right? So, 11 games today. Definitely another podcast tomorrow morning to discuss all of this. Um, and I'm sorry that the lack of, of live streams. I've just been so busy. Um, you know, but once the season starts, that's absolutely guaranteed. Football Friday stream. 
Sunday morning stream when the injury report comes out at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, uh, the Sunday night wrap-up stream where we can all vent or bask in our, our you know, wins and losses from the, from the day. Um, and then usually I like to do um, the Thursday fantasy cast. We watch the first half of the game together. So uh, that's something that I plan on doing. So again, subscribe, all right? Because there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out uh, during that time period. Uh, and I thank everybody for buying the, the draft guide this year. Uh, I've sold more copies than I ever have. And uh, that's all thanks to you guys. So I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, always keep the questions coming. You can post it underneath any videos, any questions you have. I usually respond right away. Um, and that's another thing I try to do. So, you know, it's always frustrating to me when I was a fan, when you, you, you would tweet somebody that you follow and they would never get back to you, right? Well, I pride myself on always answering your questions, all right? So if you have a question, I'll oftentimes, 90% of the time, respond within an hour, you know, certainly within a day. So um, that's something I pride myself on with this channel is to get back to you guys right away and, and give you the respect, um, you know, that you give me. By following me, this, the respect I give to you guys in terms of answering your questions and being there for you as well. So, um, you know, make sure you do that as well. And and like I said, the live streams, your opportunity as well to ask more questions, to vent, you know, as long as we keep it, you know, and debate me, uh, keep it respectful, uh, respectful, and uh, and then we go from there. So, I uh, I definitely appreciate all of the support. But uh, I'm going to be very interested to see today about the Jets. Now, Aaron Rodgers is not playing, but um, I've spoken, and they're playing Tampa Bay, I've spoken often of my concern about this offensive line. Now, I have Garrett Wilson in my one league so far. I'm concerned. This offensive line has been so beyond hideous uh, this summer. They're rotating guys in left and right. It's completely unsettled. Um, they don't have the this, this center spot settled. Uh, they don't have either tackle spot settled. Makai Becton, they're trying to make him a right tackle. Dwayne Brown's been out all preseason, pretty much. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker, who's a standout guard, right guard, he might be moved to tackle. I mean, it's a fucking mess. And so you have an aging, soon-to-be 40-year-old quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. How is this going to work? How much pounding is Aaron Rodgers going to take? Is he going to be able to withstand? And that's a concern. If you if you draft Garrett Wilson and at that elevated early second-round price tag... You're at the mercy of this offensive line because if Rodgers gets hurt, we're screwed. Zach Wilson coming in, ugh. I mean, so that that's that's a concern to me. I really want to see this offensive line start to gel and get better. This this is the one issue that could undermine this team completely. All right, Green Bay's playing New England. I'm curious to see if Jordan Love, who's um, he sat for a long time learning behind the best and Aaron Rodgers. Looked good his first preseason outing. Uh, he's earning a lot of accolades. He can move a little bit. He's got a strong arm. Accuracy questions here as well. Um, but I'm really curious to see how Jordan Love does. He could get on the... He, sh he certainly should be on the watch list. Um, super flex leagues especially. Um, you know, he, he, he has... He's intriguing. Let's just put it that way. He's got some weapons. He's got some young weapons. You know, obviously Watson and, and Dobbs and... Uh, you know, the tight end that they, the, the, the two tight ends they just drafted. So um, we're going to see what happens there. Uh, looking at the rest of the schedule, I'd like to see Deuce Vaughn again with Dallas. If he can really solidify that backup running back spot, he would be a prime handcuff for me. So my one league, I drafted Zach Carbonet and Tank Bigsby. I didn't draft Bigsby. He went undrafted. I just caught Jeff Wilson of the Dolphins and I picked up Bigsby because I think he's got you know, as a handcuff, has a better path to consistent playing time if something were to happen to Travis Etienne. So those are the two handcuffs, and they're both rookies, two top two handcuffs, in my opinion, um, for now. You know, you give me Jalen Warren, but Najee Harris doesn't ever miss games. So, it, you know, that's, you know, you, the guy needs to miss games for, him to, for the backup to gain value. But Deuce Vaughn um, did a good job at preseason week one. He can do it all. He can catch it. He can run it. He's small. But so, you know, Tony Pollard's not big either. Still don't think that Tony Pollard's getting all that massive workload that some people think. So I'm, you know, I like Tony Pollard a lot, but I'm, I'm still gauging him, pricing him based on last season's workload, not, you know, with a massive increase coming because Ezekiel is not in town. So, you know, I still think Dallas is not going to run him into the ground, especially at his size. So we just got to see what happens there. Um, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to talk about today is. Um, 
the importance and often overlooked aspect of diversifying your fantasy football teams. All right. So, you know, I, I, I compare it to like a stock portfolio, really. All right. Um, and what I mean by that is you want to have different players on your teams, on your various teams. You know, now if you have like a million teams, 10 teams, I mean, that's obviously going to happen. You know, just law of averages, right? But if you're like me and I only have two teams, that's it. I don't like having too many teams because I don't want to root for everybody. All right. Like it's, it just, it gives me, it's, it's too much. So I've had always two teams, a work league and a, and a friend's family league. And, and I'm, and I'm good with that. You know, if one of them craps out, hopefully the other one doesn't and I'm in contention. Right. And the season's not a total loss. But what I try to do among those two teams is to vary up the players as best I can, at least. So, for instance, Garrett Wilson, I have him on the one league. I am not drafting Garrett Wilson in my work league when that, that draft is this Thursday. I'm just not doing it. You know, Aaron Rodgers, behind that offensive line, I've already spoken about my concerns there. I'm not subjecting myself to possibly having my, you know, wide receiver two, maybe even wide receiver one, depending on how the draft breaks down, at the whims of this offensive line and, and the quarterback getting hurt, destroying his value. So, you know, I have the eighth pick in that league. Uh, that, that drafts Thursday. I'm hoping to get Travis Kelsey in round one. Um, round two, I'm sure Wilson will be there. I'm not going to take him. Amon Ross St. Brown, if he's there, you bet your ass I'm taking him. A.J. Brown, 100%. So, I, I you know, and, and it makes sense. It's very, it's, it's very obvious, but, it's, it, but a lot of people overlook this. You know, just have different players. Don't have the same quarterback, all right? Don't have the same, you know, top running back. Because if they go down, you're screwed on both of your teams. You know, I have James Conner, Cam Akers, David Montgomery on that one team I drafted. I'm going to try to, even though I tend to do, to do that value running back thing, I'm going to try to maybe go Rashad White, go Miles Sanders instead. You know, I have Darren Waller. Oh, man, Darren Waller might be the one exception. And you know what? You can, at tight end, you can make that. That could be the one spot where you make the exception. I really want, I really want Darren Waller everywhere. And you could replace him if he gets hurt more easily than you could a running back right? or, or a prime you know, wide receiver. So um, you definitely want to diversify as much as you possibly can. And that's, that's important. All right? Um, so anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, if you are drafting this week, and good luck. Um, you know, stay tuned again, hit the subscribe button, any injuries that happen tonight. And we got to get through these next two weeks. We can't have these top guys going down. That's just so disheartening before the season, season even starts and you lose a player. It's awful. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but if there are any injury, uh, you know, issues tonight, I'll throw videos up right away and, um, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So enjoy your Saturday. We will chat soon.